Hey, what's going on guys? Jimmy here with The General Expert, and today we're testing the low light capabilities of both the GoPro Hero 11 Black and the 10 Black. Let's get into it. Well, as you can see behind me here, I am backlit by that sun. It is very low, and that's because it's going down and it'll be down in just a little bit. So I thought, why not break both of the cameras out, put them on my rig, and that way we can test a side-by-side -side comparison of the low light performance of these cameras. Now I've made a few videos on the brand new GoPro Hero 11 Black recently. I'll link those down below. And I got a couple of comments asking about the low light characteristics of the new GoPro Hero 11 Black. Well, now is the time. Let's test it out and see what it is. And in case it wasn't obvious with this kind of a test, on both cameras I have the settings nearly identical. The only thing that's different is the GoPro Hero 11 Black has 10-bit switched on. Oh, and we are shooting 5.3K at 24 frames a second. All right, to start things off, I came here into my house, so sorry about that insane echo you're hearing. It's about 6 o'clock p.m. The sun is nearly all the way down and it is fairly dark in this living room that I'm standing in. So I thought this would be a good test being that it's not totally dark and I would say this is probably more of a normal situation you're gonna be in with your GoPro where you're just indoors trying to film family or what have you and it's a little bit dark. So which camera looks better? Right now I'm staring at the GoPro Hero 10 Black and now I'm staring at the GoPro Hero 11 Black. Go ahead and comment down below in this first test and tell me which camera you think looks better. Test number one. It's now about seven o'clock. The sun is down pretty low. There is very little light in the sky. So how are these cameras performing against one another? Well, right now, not only is it about seven, like I said, there's very little light in the sky, but I have two lights on the sides of my garage that are somewhat lighting me up. That's why I look a little orange. But looking at the front facing screens on both the 10 and the 11, both of them look fairly similar. I can't tell any difference from the screens here. Now, a lot can change, obviously, when I get this footage into editing, but for right now, both of them look fairly similar. And for reference purposes, I'm now being filmed on my Sony A7S III, which is an incredible low light camera. We got a full frame sensor. The lens I'm using is the 24 to 70 F4 Zeiss lens. So we're opened up at F4 and we're at about 24 millimeters. And you can see with the same light situation going on, this sensor is able to handle it much, much better. I don't know if you can see that, but it is 7.28 p.m., which is basically almost completely dark. Right now, I'm being lit by the lights on my house, so I don't know really how well you can see me. This is test number three, by the way. That last test was test number two, and I might have forgot to ask you to comment below on test number two which camera you thought was better. So if you didn't do that, go ahead and do that now. This will be test number three. About 7.30 at night, I'm only being lit by a couple of bulbs that are on the side of my house. And behind me is, I mean, to my eye, I can see the sky is a very, very pale blue color. I can see the difference between the tree line and the sky. Um, I don't know if that's coming off on camera whatsoever. I don't know which camera is doing better or if they're both doing exactly the same. I'm slowly turning here to hopefully give you some kind of reference as to the lighting conditions that I'm in. So you can see just a little kind of outside light there. And now you can see a light to the inside of my house. It's my sliding glass door there. And there is lights on in the house. And hopefully that kind of allowed you to sense what type of lighting I'm in I know the cameras may not be portraying that. All right, I just stepped closer to the light on the side of the house. So which is it? Are they both exactly the same? Is the Hero 11 better than the 10? Or is the 10 better than the 11? This is extremely low light. It's obviously completely dark outside and there's two light bulbs on the side of my house and one little kind of outside sconce light there on a wall. Not much light to go around. Uh, so my face, I'm sure right now is, you know, visible. 
Um, but I don't think, according to the front screen that I'm looking at here, I don't think the background is visible to you guys on these GoPros whatsoever. I'm gonna grab the Sony a7S III and we will compare with that. Standing in relatively the same spot with the Sony a7S III, I'm sure you can really see the unbelievable difference between a GoPro and a professional camera like this Sony a7S III. This has a full frame sensor and it is an incredible low light camera. So there is going to be worlds of a difference, I know, but I'm just trying to give you a frame of reference and also just hopefully allow you to see what my own eyes are seeing, which the Sony is better able, able to produce. I'm now in that extremely dark area that I was previously in with the GoPros, um, where I was talking about being able to see the skyline and the tree line. Um, on screen, on the Sony a7S III here, I can see that. It looks the same on this screen, pretty much to what my eye is able to see in real life. So I think that you guys are able to grasp the difference here. I don't think I need to even say that anymore because you can obviously tell, but a little bit of light in the sky, just a little. Tree lines you can see, and it looks like the Sony a7S III is producing almost the same results. Okay, I've done some pretty extensive testing on the new GoPro Hero 11, as well as the 10. You may have seen some of the previous videos where I've tested, for example, 10-bit versus 8-bit and some other things. The one thing with this test that I really want to make sure is known is that my testing and what I'm doing here on my end is probably going to be totally different than what you would see on your end. Even if we both have the same camera, the GoPro Hero 11, and we have the exact same settings, and we're, you know, everything is exactly the same, your computer, your graphics card and other hardware within your computer, your app that you're using to edit, the settings within your app, like for example, I'm using Adobe Premiere, and even if we are both using Adobe Premiere and have the exact same computer, we still may have inconsistencies. And that's what I'm, I guess I'm trying to talk about right now is the inconsistencies. You see, if I open some of this footage in QuickTime on my MacBook Pro, that footage may look totally different than what I'm looking at in Adobe Premiere. I've tried to research this to no end. I've been on the Adobe forums thinking that it was Premiere that was causing the problem, but everything I can come up with, every bit of information I can gather is that it's actually QuickTime that's different and not necessarily Adobe, but then again, that's apples and oranges, I guess. So bottom line is, and I guess what I'm trying to say is my experience and what I'm showing you is the very best I know how to do. I'm literally recording this footage on the GoPros, pulling it directly off the card into Adobe Premiere, the latest version. My operating system on my MacBook Pro is updated to the latest version, and right now we are in September of 2022. And so making sure that there aren't any weird settings switched on that should be switched off or you know, vice versa, everything I can figure out these are the results I'm getting. I'm able to see that the GoPro Hero 10 in 8-bit, because that's all it shoots as of now is 8-bit, has way less dynamic range than the GoPro Hero 11 in 10-bit mode. So the Hero 11, obviously, you can switch 10-bit mode off and on, and I'm seeing that as far as I can tell, in my editing software, the Hero 10 has far less dynamic range than the Hero 11. Makes sense, right? It's a new camera, should be better in terms of dynamic range. We now have 10-bit and all that stuff. The thing that's tripping me up a little bit is that when I open the files in QuickTime, 
both the 10 and the 11 files, while they do look slightly different, they do look a lot more the same. Now, again, researching that, trying to figure out why that the two different cameras footages look a lot closer to the same in QuickTime than they do side by side in Premiere. The only thing I can come up with is that, you know, and this is other people talking and who knows if they know what they're talking, but they sound like they do, but who knows? The only thing I can come up with is that QuickTime doesn't use current standards in terms of displaying colors and saturations and contrasts and stuff like that. So that's where the research I'm doing is leading more towards QuickTime being the problem and Premiere actually rendering things the way they're supposed to be rendered and the way we would see them on TV. I'm not a colorist. I'm not a professional with all of this stuff. I'm just a dude who likes tinkering with my cameras. I do the very best I can do to be as thorough as possible and that's why I'm giving this lengthy explanation into what we just saw in this video. Um, yeah, your mileage may vary. Do a lot of other research. Look at multiple videos on YouTube. If that's the research you're doing, you're watching these videos like my low light test, you're watching other low light tests, watch them all. Gather up that information and see what the bulk or the majority is coming up with because some people may have totally different answers than what I'm coming up with. And that's just the reality of things. We all don't have the same systems, the same settings, the same, you know, everything. Everything is gonna be different. On my end, from what I'm seeing, the 11 is much better than the 10. What does that mean to you? It's just a piece of the puzzle that you're trying to put together. I get it, but I just wanted to throw this out there. I'm sorry that it was so long, but I just wanted you to know what I'm seeing on my end, which may be different than what you're seeing or what somebody else is seeing on their end. To me, the 11 is hands down much better. So I hope that helps some of you guys try to figure all of this out. The GoPro is not a low light camera. It's just not. If you're planning on filming things a lot indoors, if you're planning on filming things you know, in dark situations outdoors, the GoPro is not the camera that you need to be using. It is not built for low light. What you need to be using is a camera with a larger sensor, whether it's a pocket point and shoot with a one inch sensor, whether it's an APS-C sized sensor, whether it's a full frame sensor, any of those options are gonna give you worlds better performance, than something like a GoPro. A GoPro is, in my opinion, not built to do any sort of low light situation whatsoever. It is built to be outside during the day in full sun or even, you know, just the sun being above the horizon line and you'll get really good uh, footage coming out of these cameras. As soon as that sun starts to go down and you're in shadows, that's when the ISO gets pumped up to whatever your setting is and it gets grainy. It's just this, how small sensors work. By the way, one setting that I did have set on both of these cameras was the ISO ceiling at 400. I did that because that's what I normally shoot in and I wanted to make sure that we weren't having the variable of maybe the sun being in a different spot in the metering you know of the camera doing an auto iso and so maybe one iso being at you know 1600 and one iso being at 800 and so oh all of a sudden we see this huge difference and look that one's grainy and that one's not and blah 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 i tried to set the max ceiling of the iso in all of these scenes and all of all of this footage to 400 on both cameras so as far as i know like I told you, and I've been through all the settings, but I'm, I'm just talking about if there's something behind the scenes I'm not able to set. 
The only different settings between these two cameras was 10-bit mode on on the Hero 11. And with that, I will end it here. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I sure as heck did. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Look at the description below for more information. I will see you in the next one.